Hello, let's continue this series of videos. This is episode three, and I put the link under this video so you can see other episodes. Today we will solve for this interesting integral, and you can see we have the floor function here. The final result is very beautiful, so keep watching to the end. Before we move on, don't forget to subscribe my channel, turn on the notification, and give a like. So let's get started. And first, let's look at the output from the Wolfram alpha. Here we can see Wolfram is able to recognize the floor function, and also it can generate the graph for the integrand function, but it fails to solve it. Actually, it's very interesting if we compare it with the previous problem when Wolfram fails. Here is the output from that mirror integral video. And if you miss that video, you can click the link in the description box to see it. For this integral, Wolfram fails either, but at least it can give the approximated numerical result, and also it reports the standard computation time exceeded. But if we look back to our today's problem, there's even no numerical result, and Wolfram didn't report anything about the computation time. It seems Wolfram completely strikes this time, so let's solve it by hand. Here is our integral, and from the lower and upper limit we can see x goes from 0 to 1. So if we take the reciprocal, 1 over x goes from 1 to infinity. If we take the floor function, then it will give the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. If we take the reciprocal again, then this integrand function will give the discrete values, such as 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and so on. And here is a plot for the integrand function, so it's like a staircase. And let's draw the vertical lines to make it clear. And we know, from the geometry, the integral stands for the total area of these rectangles. And here I only highlight 5 rectangles and surely there are infinite of them. And for each rectangle, the area equals to the height times the width, and we already got the height for each of them, and we mark them here. So next, we need to find the width for each rectangle, and equivalently, we need to find the x-coordinate for the edge of each rectangle. I copy them here. And first, we label the area for each rectangle as a1, a2, a3, and so on. And we know for the floor function, it always gives integers. So we set 1 over x equals to k. And here, k takes integers 1, 2, 3, and so on. So we can solve for x, which is 1 over k. After plugging values for k, then we got the x coordinate here. And then we mark the x coordinate on the graph so we can calculate the area for each rectangle. And here is the area for A1. The blue term is the height, and the red term is the width. And similarly, we can calculate A2, and also A3, and keep going until An. And we know for the integral, it equals to the sum of the area for these infinite many rectangles. I copy them here. To save the space, I define the partial sum as in. So the integral i equals to the limit when n goes to infinity. And then we plug in the expression for a1, a2, a3 until an. And next, we distribute the blue term into the parentheses. And note for the terms inside the purple box, we group them together. And then for the terms inside the green box, we put them together. I copy them here. And for the first group, we write it here. For the second group, this is a telescope sum, so we can write it into this way. And here, we write the product into the subtraction. And then all these terms cancel out. And I copy it here. And then we write the first term into a compact form. Now we take the limit. And then we split it into two limits. And this term vanishes after taking the limit. And then we write the first term as the series notation. 
and we know this famous series it equals to pi square over six. So we got the final answer, and don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like.